Welcome to St. Helena Ministries Daily Prayer with the Divine Office. I'm Patrick. This is my wonderful, beautiful wife, Charlotte. Hi. Today is Sunday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time. Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea. It belongs to him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Forty years I endured that generation. I said they are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Come, let, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joyfully shout, all you on earth, give praise to the glory of God, and with a hymn, sing out his glorious praise. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Let all the earth kneel in his sight, extolling his marvelous fame. Honor his name in highest heaven. Give praise. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come forth and see all the great works that God has brought forth by his might. Fall on your knees before his glorious throne. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory and thanks be to the Father, honor and praise to the Son, and to the Spirit, source of life and of love. Alleluia. All you nations, sing out your joy to the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. When the wicked are judged, they shall not stand, nor find room among those who are just. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Lord, you are the fullness of life, of holiness, and of joy. Fill our days and nights with the love of your wisdom, that we may bear fruit in the beauty of holiness, like a tree watered by running streams. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, was it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. See, See how, how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. life. Here is a king of my own choosing, who will rule on Mount Zion. Here is a king of my own choosing who will rule on Mount Zion. Why this tumult among nations, among peoples, this useless murmuring? They arise, the kings of the earth, 
prince's plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations, put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Blessed are they who put their trust in the Lord. Lord God, you gave the peoples of the world as the inheritance of your only Son. You crowned him as King of Zion, your holy city, and gave him your church to be his bride. As he proclaims the law of your eternal kingdom, may we serve him faithfully and so share his royal power forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is, is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Here, Here is a king of my own choosing, who will rule on Mount Zion. Lord, you are my protector. You have raised me up in glory. Lord, you are my protector. You have raised me up in glory. How many are my foes, O Lord? How many are rising up against me? How many are saying about me, there is no help for him in God? But you, Lord, are a shield about me, my glory who lift up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord. He answers from his holy mountain. I lie down to rest and I sleep. I wake for the Lord upholds me. I will not fear even thousands of people who are ranged on every side against me. Arise, Lord. Save me, my God, you who strike all my foes on the mouth, you who break the teeth of the wicked. O Lord of salvation, bless your people. Lord God, you heard the cry of your son when he was oppressed and saved him from the sleep of death. Arise, Lord, help your church. Be its shield so that it may hold up its head and radiate the glory of the resurrection. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Lord, you are my protector. You have raised me up in glory. May the word of Christ ever fill your hearts. Share with one another the wisdom you receive. A reading from the beginning of the book of Esther. During the reign of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. While he was occupying the royal throne in the stronghold of Susa, in the third year of his reign, he presided over a feast for all his officers and ministers, the Persian and the Median aristocracy, the nobles and the governors of the provinces. Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the women inside the royal palace of King Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the king was merry with wine, he instructed Mehuman, Biztha, Arbana, Bigtha, Habagtha, Zithar, and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who attended King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti into his presence, wearing the royal crown, that he might display her beauty to the populace and the officials, for she was lovely to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the royal order issued through the eunuchs. At this the king's wrath flared up, and he burned with fury. He conferred with the wise men versed in the law, because the king's business was conducted in general consultation with lawyers and jurists. He asked them, What is to be done by law with Queen Vashti for disobeying the order of King Ahasuerus issued through the eunuchs? In the presence of the king and of the officials, Memucan answered, 
Queen Vashti has not wronged the king alone, but all the officials and the populace throughout the provinces of King Ahasuerus. If it please the king, let an irrevocable royal decree be issued by him and inscribed among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, forbidding Vashti to come into the presence of King Ahasuerus and authorizing the king to give her royal dignity to one more worthy than she. There was in the stronghold of Susa a certain Jew named Mordecai, son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjaminite, who had been exiled from Jerusalem with the captives taken with Jeconia, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had deported. He was foster father to Hadassah, that is, Esther, his cousin, for she had lost both father and mother. The girl was beautifully formed and lovely to behold. On the death of her father and mother, Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter. When the king's order and decree had been obeyed and many maidens brought together to the stronghold of Susa under the care of Hegai, Esther was also brought into the royal palace under the care of Hegai, custodian of the women. The girl pleased him and won his favor, so he promptly furnished her with cosmetics and provisions. Then picking out seven maids for her from the royal palace, he transferred both her and her maids to the best place in the harem. Esther did not reveal her nationality or family, for Mordecai had commanded her not to do so. Esther was led, led to King Ahasuerus in his palace in the tenth month, Tibeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all other women, and of all the virgins she won his favor and benevolence. So he placed the royal diadem on her head and made her queen in place of Vashti. There is none so great as the Lord our God. He is enthroned on high and looks down upon the heavens and the earth. He raises up the needy from the dust and lifts up the poor from the dunghill. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He raises up the needy from the dust and lifts up the poor from the dunghill. A reading from a letter to Proba by St. Augustine, Bishop. Why in our fear of not praying as we should do we turn to so many things to find what we should pray for? Why do we not say instead, in the words of the psalm, I have asked one thing from the Lord, this is what I will seek, to dwell in the Lord's house all the days of my life, to see the graciousness of the Lord and to visit his temple. There the days do not come and go in succession, and the beginning of one day does not mean the end of another. All days are one, simultaneously and without end, and the life lived out in these days has itself no end. So that we might obtain this life of happiness, he who is true life itself taught us to pray, not in many words as though speaking longer could gain us a hearing. After all, we pray to one who, as the Lord himself tells us, knows what we need before we ask it. Why he should ask us to pray when he knows what we need before we ask him may perplex us if we do not realize that our Lord and God does not want to know what we want, for he cannot fail to know it, but wants us rather to exercise our desire through our prayers so that we may be able to receive what he is preparing to give us. His gift is very great indeed, but our capacity is too small and limited to receive it. That is why we are told, enlarge your desires, do not bear the yoke with unbelievers. The deeper our faith, the stronger our hope, the greater our desire, the larger will be our capacity to receive that gift, which is very great indeed. No eye has seen, it has no color, no ear has heard it, it has no sound. It has not entered man's heart. Man's heart must enter into it. In this faith, hope, and love, we pray always with the unwearied desire. However, at set times and seasons, we may also pray to God in words, so that by these signs we may instruct ourselves and mark the progress we have made in our desire and spur ourselves on to deepen it. The more fervent the desire, the more worthy will be its fruit. When the apostles 
when the apostle tells us, pray without ceasing, he means this, desire unceasingly that life of happiness, which is nothing if not eternal, and ask it of him who alone is able to give it. You will seek me, and when you seek with your whole heart, you will find me. You will pray to me, and I will listen to you. I know the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for misfortune, plans that will give you a future full of hope. You will pray to me, and I will listen to you. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glory- glorious company of apostles praise you. <laughs> the noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of our worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, our source of power and inspiration, give us strength and joy in serving you as followers of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. Thank you for praying with us today. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday Rosary at 6 p.m. Eastern every Sunday on our YouTube channel. The link is usually, almost always, in the episode description. Please also like, share, follow, and subscribe on whichever platforms you use. We are still trying to hit that 750 subscriber mark by the end of the year. Pray for us, and know of our continued prayers for you. Have a blessed day.